Welcome to Trading Nation. I'm Sarah Eisen, joined now by Rich Bernstein, CEO of Bernstein Advisors, an independent investment advisory firm with $7.4 billion in assets under management. Rich, good to see you. Thanks for joining yeah, us. Yeah, thanks, Sarah. So what do you make of this push-pull we're seeing in the markets? Better earnings on one hand, but rising inflation expectations and interest rates on the other. Which one wins? Yeah, I think you described it perfectly when you said push-pull. This is a tug-of-war that's very normal in a later cycle environment where you have bad things happening. For instance, you know, the 10-year going above 3%, but then you have good things happening. In other words, the nominal economy is growing faster than people think, and earnings are generally quite strong. So it's a push or pull. I would argue, and I think my firm would argue at this point in the cycle, that earnings, the good news still wins out. That we're not at the point where uh, the number of bad things overwhelms the number of good things. That may come later in the cycle, but for now, I think it'll pay to stay bullish. So that's a buy the dip recommendation. We'll continue to work in this bull market? Well, I'm about the worst short term trader you could meet, so I don't know about necessarily buy the dip, but I would say, you know, if you have a reasonable investment time frame, I think you're rewarded by, by hanging on here. What about the move in Treasury yields? What does it signal to you? There's this big debate on Wall Street of whether it's actually a regime shift or if it's just a natural progression in what's seen as a healthier economy with a little bit of benign inflation. Yeah, I think it's actually both, to answer your question there. I think it is a natural phenomenon at this point in the cycle for interest rates to go up. And, and as you start getting production bottlenecks in the economy and tight labor markets and that sort of thing and inflation beginning to heat up. However, I also think it's a regime shift. And by that I mean that if you look at how investors have been positioned for most of the past at least five years, if not longer, they've certainly been positioned for continued disinflation and deflation. Now we're at a part in the cycle where inflation is starting to come back. Now, that doesn't mean we're going to have 8 or 10% inflation, but if inflation keeps creeping up here, as we suspect it will, uh, portfolios in general on the street are just not positioned for that. So how do you position for that? I think you have to have, you have to think in terms of pro-nominal growth. The key word now is nominal, right? People always like to talk about pro-growth. The question you have to ask is a pro-real growth or mm -hmm. pro-nominal growth. The answer now is pro-nominal growth. So what you have to do is you have to look for industries that benefit from pricing power. That would be generally commodity industries. It would be very, very cyclical industries. And the industries you want to stay away from are the ones that don't have that, things like utilities or, um, or, or REITs or telecom or something like that. What does it mean for overall S&P profit margins? Got a little bit of a warning out of Caterpillar. That maybe mm -hmm. this was as good as it gets because of those rising input costs. Do we have to worry across industries like that? I don't think you have to worry across the board. I mean, I can't speak to Caterpillar specifically, but I think that what you will find is that margins will stay healthy for a lot of companies, as I said, that are kind of pro-inflation, pro-nominal growth companies. I think if you are a buyer of commodities, you're going to be in big trouble here and margins will be squeezed. And finally, Richard, you know, we look for signs of stress in the system when we're trying to see whether the markets turn, the credit markets, for instance. Are you, are you getting any sort of warning signals or green lights from other places in the market? Yeah, I don't think, you know, one place that people would normally look, Sarah, would be, would be corporate, uh, corporate spreads or junk bond spreads or something like that. And they're, they're still remarkably narrow and have actually gotten a little bit narrower recently. So I think the fixed income markets are not as concerned about the day-to-day -day volatility as, say, the, the stock market is. You know, the, the, it makes sense. You know, junk bonds generally outperform quality bonds as interest rates go up, and that appears to be happening again. Rich Bernstein. We'll leave it there. Thank you for joining us. Thanks, Sarah. All right. Thank you all for watching Trading Nation today. I'm Sarah Eisen. We'll see you next time. Hey there, thanks for checking out CNBC on YouTube. Be sure to subscribe to stay up to date on all of the day's biggest stories. You can also click on any of the videos around me to watch the latest from CNBC. Thanks for watching.